Welcome, welcome to this live stream. I'm going to take you guys through the Guild Student Exhibition of Artwork. And I'm starting with the one and only Chris Toledo. Um, this is his period bathroom, which is, and I'll do a little bit of a step back to show you just the scale. This is the 10 card with his name. Hey, Al, good to see you. Um, yeah, I'm going to start with Chris Toledo's work here. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but his period architectural room boxes are unmatched. He's amazing. He's incredible. Look at the detail. Um, I think his scaling is what is so amazing about his work. It's really the scaling. Um, everything is just perfectly small enough. Um, so yeah, so that is that piece. Um, we're gonna take a walk around the room. I'm gonna show you as much as I can. This second piece is, uh, I actually brought this piece. This is work by Hernan Bolshevik out of Argentina. And he does room boxes that are, they are representative of, you know, restaurants you might find, restaurants, tapas, bars, restaurants in Spain. He loves all things Spain. And so this is a representation of a classic Spanish tapas bar. Uh, he's amazing. His work is incredible. Look at the ceiling. And then just so you can get a sense of scale and feel free to ask questions if you guys have any questions. We are, I'm coming to you live from uh, Guild School in Castine, Maine. And every year the Guild, the International Guild of Miniature Artisans, they host Guild School. Uh, it's the best uh, week of the year he uh, for miniatures and for miniature making with some of the most talented miniature artisans, teachers, educators on the planet. So I'll do a little bit of a sweep of the room so you can get a sense of scale. So this is uh, all of the miniature art and miniatures that were brought by the students who are attending school here and the teachers. This is uh, work by Peter Kendall. Peter Kendall is uh, also an instructor here at Guild School. This is one of his room boxes. Very classic, very traditional, just incredible work and detail. Of course, this room box is filled with a number of other artisan pieces. So you have uh, work by John Hodgson, Peter Quisto, Diane Almeida, uh, Ron Stetkowitz, uh, there are candlesticks in this room by, by the iconic Bill Robertson. Uh, uh, there are bowls by Teresa Welch, uh, paintings by Leslie Smith. I mean, this is just a wonderful piece filled with beautiful miniature treasures made by some fantastic artisans. So let's continue to walk through the exhibition. And if you guys have any questions, just let me know. This is a t this is a smaller room box shadow box by Carol Block with a southwestern theme. Just check out the you can see my reflection there. Check out the uh, the, the lighting, which is moving, which is crazy. Um, of course, you got the flower. You've got the fireplace that's flickering, whoosh, crazy, and it's a southwest theme. As we move on. Uh, this is a room box by, they were all incredible. I, I it's not a, I'm not gonna, I, I can't reuse that word enough. This is by Yulia Chin Lee. She's a master miniaturist, uh, that works with turned wood. So each piece of, 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 of this room box was individually turned. The vases, the columns, uh, ma made by... Yulia Chin Lee. She's amazing. She's a teacher here. She's teaching um, wood turnings this week here at uh, in Castine. I'm going to just sweep across some of the furniture that is here made by... Actually, this is all work by students that have made pieces in the Guild Study Program. So um, this, what we're doing right now is a Guild, guild school, but throughout the year, there are study programs that uh, students can take work off site from Castine, Maine and take class. So this is, I'm just gonna give you scale here. This is work by Di Diane Almeida, stained glass. 
in miniature. It's a doomed, it's a doomed, it's a domed skylight fixture made of silver and enamel. Just look at this piece. I'm gonna just bump this up just so you could see uh, the craziness and the perfection of Diana Almeida's work. This is another piece by her. Again, uh, this is stained glass in miniature. I guess this is called the Pikachu Method, fine silver and enamel. Let's blow this up so you can see even more detail. That's crazy. It's crazy. This is, uh, these are a number of pieces that were uh, created by students in a class by Sue Veter, who's an artisan of the guild. Picnic baskets filled with tiny treasures. How fun is that? Love that. I'll continue to sweep across. <laughs> I mean, I want to stop everywhere, but we can't stop everywhere. This is uh, work by Barbara Culty, who's also an artisan of the guild. Um, but this is actually a piece that she put together with a number of artisans. Uh, I guess uh, there's a cat by Linda Fisher. Look at that. I guess there's a toy in his hand. And then Francis Armstrong is the maker of many of the other pieces in this. I'm going to assume it's a toy shop. I think it might be. Let's look at it from here. Look at the perspective. Look at the scale. Crazy. Love it, love it, love it. This is work by just the swoon-worthy Beth Freeman Kane out of South Africa. She makes the most beautiful wildlife miniatures, all framed. Again, let's, let's, let's zoom out on this just so you can see the scale. I'm not going to touch the piece, but and I'll get out of the glare. Crazy. Um, okay, so this is another piece by Peter Kendall. I'm gonna sweep around the room and then go through some more pieces. This is by Laura Moore. That's a marquetry table that she uh, crafted in a class by Chris Malcolmson, who is another artisan of the guild that teaches the most amazing wood classes. And then Liddy Stroud made this incredible, incredible, well, it's it, she, Laura made it, but it was in a class by Liddy, Liddy Stroud, who's also an artisan. Okay, moving on. This is a, this is actually a prototype. So if you know anything about the Guild School, um, we work about a year in, in advance. So the, uh, the recommendations for the, the, the years come, the recommendations for the programs come about a year in advance. So this is a piece by uh, Mary Grady O'Brien. It's a collaboration between Mary Grady O'Brien and um, Mark Murphy, both extremely talented miniaturists, uh, both working with different disciplines. So Mary Grady is a beautiful painter, a lot of folk art pieces, and then Mark Murphy does the furniture, uh, which is just incredible, crazy. Okay, moving, moving on. Let's look at some of the, these are oil paintings in miniature. Again, I'm not gonna touch it, but I will give you scaling. That seems to be the, that's the, what's it called in Germany, I think, the castle in Germany. Isn't that not beautiful? You could see again my finger for scale. I'm gonna zoom out so I could show you some more of these in beautiful, I guess they seem to be, oh, it's okay. It takes me a little while sometimes. This is a whole assortment of paintings of castles. I have found my, oh my God. I have found my happy place. I love castles, I love miniatures, and now, oh my God, it's crazy. You guys have any questions? So I am, I'm coming to you live from Guild School in Castine, Maine. This is the annual trek where miniaturists from all over the world come to learn how to make miniatures. Um, so let's show some additional pieces. This is, this is work by Orgy Tripp. She's actually the president of the Guild. Just so you could see, look how beautiful that is. And there are additional pieces here by um, Sandra Henry, Sandra uh, Rubin, uh, who passed away unfortunately last year, but we we, um, we do have some of her work here that are on display. Just look at the flower work, it's crazy. It's crazy. I love that piece. She was an amazing artisan. We're very fortunate to have some of these pieces that are, are here. Um, some made by students in the class, like Audrey Tripp, and then some made by her, uh, Sandra Henry Don Sandra Henry Wall herself. Um, this is, these were flowers that were done by Carol Block. 
in a Sandra Rubin class. Is that not the craziest you've ever seen? Beautiful, beautiful. And then there's an entire assortment, like a whole little scene there. Okay, sweeping cross, we've got wicker pieces, some by um, Kim Stewart herself, uh, more flower pieces. These are by, oh my goodness. These are also proposals for 2024 uh, classes. Oh my gosh, look at these. One, two, I'm looking for a back plate, doorknob, and key. Just for scale, I'm gonna hold this here. These are perfection, they're perfection. Perfection in miniature. I think flowers are one of my favorite categories in miniatures for sure. Um, that's uh, glue on my fingers because I've been in class all day. Uh, look at this piece. What do you guys think of some of these pieces? Come on, give me some uh, feedback. So that's Sherry Dawn Miller. And then I'm trying to move as slowly as possible because I don't want to knock anything over and I don't want to touch anything because you can't, you really can't. Contemporary Fall Arrangement. This is a 36 hour class. So if you guys decided to come to Guild School, it's happening next year, next June. It's a, it, it, these are some of the classes that are being offered. The prototypes are here on display in the uh, art uh, exhibition or the student art, student miniature exhibition. This is work by Kate Santagen. She's my pal. She's my mini pal from New York. Hey Kate, if you're watching, good to see you. Some of her work can be seen at the upcoming Guild show in September. So you want guys want to put that on your calendar. She's got a really fun, whimsical approach to her miniatures. You really have to ask her about her tiny Metro card because <laughs> it's crazy. All right. I think, honestly, one of the f most amazing things about this exhibit is this incredible table filled and i'm going to take you through i'm going to i'm going to slow it down and take you through i just wanted to share just the scope everything on this table right here was directly or inspired by anel ferguson and nell ferguson is a master miniaturist in small scale needlework petty point tiny 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 micro scaled pieces so i'm not going to be able to tell whose work is whose, because it's, it, but either, but there, this is a testament to her teaching skills because whether you're a student or you're a collector, all of these pieces are just incredible, incredible. And just so you know, that's a, that's a tiny little box that is embroidered with, look at this, look at the level of detail. That's my finger, and that's the box. I'm sorry, I can't hold it any, I can't hold it steady. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna try to show you some of, like, I mean, I, I don't even know. They're all amazing. I don't know where to stop. I'm gonna show you this casket. Um, this is an example of 17th century embroidery that young girls did in, uh, when they were growing up to learn some of those embroidery skills. Uh, and this is a one twelve scale version of these historic sort of pieces that you might find in museums today. They're in full scale. So the full scale box would maybe be, you know, a foot or two. Look at the, this is obviously a seascape theme. This was also done in a class uh, by, um, this is done by Marie Wilson in a, it, it, but in an, in an, in an, in an L. Ferguson class. Look at that. Just look at that. All right, to continue, so everything here is needlework in small scale. I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop at the casket again because these just blow me away. Look at that. Just take a second to look at the needlework. Now I'm taking a class in embroidery right now. I cannot explain to you the level of difficulty it is to stitch with silk fabric to this level of Detail and accuracy. It's crazy. I can't even go there. Can't even go there. I can't even go there. Um, so I'm having a I'm having a fun time with uh, needlework right now. This is a book cover t made by Peggy Meyer. Some of these students are just amazing too. Uh, in an Anel Ferguson class. So this whole sort of display. This one, two, three, four, six foot tables filled with amazing work 
either done by Anel or inspired by Anel or um, taken uh, student work done by students taken in class by Anel. It's crazy. There's another casket. I'm just blown away by all the caskets. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I can't. Oh, my God. And then under that casket, I'm sorry. Look at the look at the beautiful wood box. I mean, it just it continues on and on and on. Ah, we didn't even talk about the, the these are carpets. These are rugs, guys. Rugs. Look, look, look. I don't know, hundreds of stitches, hundreds of stitches for for each of these. Guys, these are hand stitched. These takes months and months and months and months and months to do. People sitting and knitting and crocheting and embroidering and needlework. Look at this chair. Look at the chair. Look at that chair. I want to turn it around, but I can't because I can't touch. Look at this Christmas themed chair, all embroidered. And I hope I'm using the right word. Embroidery versus needlework by, versus micro knitting. Look at this. It's a table. Oh, of course, it's a hardwood table, an expertly crafted hardwood table. Oh, the table is made by Mark Murphy, iconic in the miniature world. And then on top is needlework. Ah, oh, it's a card table. It's hitting me just now. <gasps> Look at that. Oh, my God. Okay. So, once again, I mean, I can't. Look at this. I can't even. Look at the rabbit. Oh, my God. Okay. I'm going to just sweep again to show you just. I. Th this is qu quite possibly the largest assortment of miniature micro knitting work, needlework. In history, I'm going to say, there's never been this many pieces of micro-miniature needlework in one place at one time. It's just extraordinary. All right, so I've got about five more minutes, guys, so I want to take you through as many more pieces as I can before we wrap this up. Look how fun this is. Maine Maritime for Maritime for Antiques. How cute is that? Love that. Look at that. I want to make sure I give the artists and students their due. This is by Chad Gobel. Gobel? Chad Gobel. And then Robert Haven did this piece, which is Inside a Doll's Wardrobe. Love that. Love that. And then there's more work by Robert Haven. We got Becky Scroggins. She did this beautiful clock piece. Look at that. Love that. Love that. And then more work by Becky in a class project that she did. Sofa is by Marsha McLean. I think the pillows might be by her too. Peonies by Picky, uh, Peonies by Pia Becker. Where are the peonies? Oh my God, let's zoom in on the peonies. Whew, by Pia Becker, she's amazing. And then the shopping trolley is by Kim Stewart. Love her work. She's here at the school this week. I think that about wraps up my little live. I didn't show you everything. This is now this should inspire you guys to either think about coming to Guild School or even thinking about coming up and traveling to this historic Castine. And it's it's an idyllic main coastal town. It's lovely. And every year during Guild School, there is incredible work on display by students and artists. That's a sweater. Christine. Laurier, Fair Isle Cardigan Design Knit by Christiane. Look at that. Oh my God. I think I might have to just again show scale. Not touching it, but oh, this is my finger. It's awful. Anyway, and I'm sorry about the shaking. I can't not shake because I'm trying to get close. All right, let's do that. Crazy, crazy. All right, finishing up with a few more paintings by Sue Veter. Love her work. A Birdcage by Pierluigi Perovano. He's a scholarship student here today from Italy this week. All right. I hate to, I hate to say goodbye because I could talk about miniatures forever. But thank you guys for joining this very special live from the Guild School in Castine, Maine. Maybe I'll flip the camera around and say hello and maybe goodbye all at once. Thank you for joining this live. I'm here as a student at the Guild School. I'll be here all week. Haha. <laughs> and um, yeah, so thank you for joining. And please leave comments and tell me what you think about this awesome, awesome work. Okay. Bye. Great to see everybody. Okay.